Welcome. I'm Pastor Craig Miller at Alhambra First United Methodist Church. Today we're going to be talking about Thrive Values. Let us open up with a word of prayer. Dear God, help us to value as you value, to see people as you see them, to forgive, embrace, and love as you do. Amen. So we've been engaged in a series on the topic of Thrive. As we're starting this new year, I thought it would be fun to focus on different concepts that help us to grow in our faith and grow in our lives in general. So, so far we've talked about these topics. We looked at think, health, renew, inspire, and today, values. Now values are different than beliefs. Values are something that really guides our actions, sometimes when we don't even know it. I like to use this idea when talking about values. Values are the unwritten rules and beliefs that guide our actions. Let me say that again. Values are the unwritten rules and beliefs that guide our actions. This is why someone may say, I believe in something that's very important, but their values speak something else. It's been interesting to see our various politicians who have been promoting wearing masks, which I think is very important. Obviously, we've been doing that at church, but how many of them have been caught without masks at different occasions, even though they have been promoting wearing masks all the time? So they may believe that masks are very important, but their values say, when I'm on my own with my own group of people, maybe it's okay if I'm not wearing masks. I can take a break from it. Or maybe there are different exceptions for this rule that I've put for other people to follow. So values are the things that we actually do, even when we may say we believe something else. Now, one of the tools you can use to discover your values is called a mind map. It's a tool to help you make decisions and reveal your values. The idea is, is that you put your thing that you're working on in the center, and then around the circle you begin to write down the different things that you need to consider when you're focusing on that one particular thing. For example, let's just say that you've decided to get a puppy. So, as you think about that, well, what are all the things that are involved with having a puppy? especially if you've never had a puppy before. Well, here's some of the things you need to think about. How are you going to feed the puppy? What kind of food will the puppy need? Will you be going to a pet store? Will you be picking it up at a grocery store? Will you have it mailed to you? And what kind of food are you going to get? Does it need to have organic food or just regular canned dog food? A lot of decisions that go into this idea of feeding. And that's just the start. Well, the next one, well, how are you going to handle the poop? If we can use that word in a sermon. That's a big issue. It used to be you just let your dog go in the backyard and 
a couple days later, you get a shovel and take care of it. I mean, that's what I did when I was a kid. That was my job. But now if you walk your dog, you have to carry a bag with you and all the things that go along with that. So it is a major issue and concern. And then there is playing with the dog. Who's going to play with the dog? And how often are you going to play with it? And what kind of toys will it need to enjoy itself? And how are you going to help it to exercise and move around? So maybe uh, walking the dog will be something that becomes a normal part of your routine. And then the big one, the health of the dog. How are you going to ensure that the dog stays healthy? Do you have to give it vitamins? Do you have to get a flea collar? Um, or are there shots that you get for the dog? Um, who's going to be the vet? Uh, how are you going to pay for that? All those things become major concerns. So as you look at these, you look at the things that you say, well, this is why I really want the dog. This is the thing that gets me most excited. That play stuff sounds like a lot of fun. Taking the dog out and interacting with the dog and and the uh, walk would be good for my health. But some of those other things, well, those are going to be things that I'm going to have to really think about if I really want to make this commitment to get a puppy. If you decide to get the dog, then your values will change. The things that you think are important are going to change as well. The way you use your time. How much time you're going to spend with the dog. The money you're going to spend on taking care of the dog. Of course, the happiness quotient. There are those who say having a dog or a pet makes you happy. So that's probably one of the main reasons why you would want a dog or a pet for companionship. And then it will help you determine, well, what's really important in my life? And if you get a puppy, that puppy becomes very important to you as you take care of the puppy. So with this mind map, you can see how one decision, getting a puppy, can totally turn your world upside down or change it in a dramatic fashion. So values often change with the circumstances that we find ourselves in. And our values really guide the decisions that we make in everything that we do. Our scripture today from Mark 12, 28 through 31 says this. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, he asked them, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Well, this was Jesus' way of talking about living out the Ten Commandments. And this idea of loving God completely and wholly with everything that you do. But then he threw in another part of it that was unexpected. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. And one of the things that's interesting in terms of looking at that phrase, which we have all heard many, many times, is that part of love yourself. If we love ourselves, if we take care of ourselves, if we have a strong faith, that helps us grow in our lives, then we're more likely to treat others in a better way. So loving yourself as well as loving others goes together in many different ways. It's part of our values that underline what we do. So the scribe who was talking to Jesus asked him a follow-up question. Well, who is my neighbor? And Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers, who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. 
Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near to him, and when he saw him he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Well, let's take a look at the characters in this parable and try to think about what values they must have had. The first was the man. He was on a pilgrimage, or he was on a business trip. And this must have been very important to him because this road was known as being very treacherous, this road from Jericho to Jerusalem. And the fact that he was traveling by himself uh, spoke to the fact that he was probably in a big hurry. The other thing we can assume was that he was Jewish. He was part of the Jewish faith and tradition. The next person that we see was the robber or the robbers. Well, what values did they have? What had caused them to reach such a state in life that they were willing to rob a person on the road, not only rob them, but to beat the person up as well? What had happened in their life that had gotten them to that state of mind where they could just attack an innocent person on the road and take the things that they had. Then we have three people who come by this man who was beaten up and on the side of the road. First, we have a priest. Now, a priest was a very respected man of faith. He would have been well-schooled in the Torah. He would have known everything about the what we call the Old Testament or the Torah. He would have been well-versed and he would have been seen as a religious leader of his time. He even could have been a member of the Sanhedrin, someone who was pronouncing the rules and the laws for the people of Jerusalem and Judea. Well, when he's coming down the road, what does he do? He goes on the other side. Notice how Jesus makes a point that this man walked to the other side of the road so he wouldn't get too close, and he walked right by. But what values did he show? Did he show the compassion that you would expect of a priest as seen in many of the writings in the Bible? Or was he controlled by some other values. Maybe he too was in a hurry, and he knew if he took care of this man, he would be late for whatever appointment he had. Or maybe he was afraid of becoming unclean if he touched someone who had been wounded, and as a result, he would have to be purified before he could go to the temple to do his work. Well, next came the Levite. Now, a Levite was a member of the tribe of the Levites, one of the 12 tribes that was in charge of the temple. And so he, too, had many requirements for himself about staying clean and being prepared to serve in the temple. And like the priest, someone who you expect would be merciful to this man, he, too, walked on the other side of the road and walked right by them. Well, you can imagine the listeners who were there in front of Jesus, how they would say, well, that doesn't sound like they were very good priests or Levites. You know, what was wrong with these people? Why weren't they a neighbor to this poor man who was being up and on the side of the road? And then Jesus threw the curveball. He said another man came down the road, a Samaritan. And he didn't walk by him, but went up to him to help this poor man who was beaten on the side of the road. Now to the listeners of Jesus, this would have been 
uh, an astonishing thing because the Samaritans were looked down upon. They were almost considered to be traitors because the Samaritans worshipped in a different temple. Although they shared the Jewish heritage, they were seen as traitors to the Jewish faith by those other Jews in Judea. If you think back in history uh, to the Thirty Years' War that took place in Europe in the 1600s between the Catholics and the Protestants, it was very similar to that. It was as if Jesus was talking to the Catholics and saying a Protestant came down the road, or he was talking to the Protestants and said a Catholic came down the road. The people would have been saying, well, wait a minute. How can we view these people favorably? And why would this man take care of someone who he may have seen as his enemy under normal circumstances? So as we can see, as we think about each one of these, that each one of these persons operate out of some set of values that controlled their actions, that helped them decide how they were going to react to this man who was walking down the road. Some of them decided to beat him up. Others decided to ignore him. But one person decided to have compassion. The passage continues. And when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. He put them on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and when I come back I will repay you whatever more you spend. Not only did he take care of the man, he went the extra mile. There were six actions that he took. First, he binds his wounds. Second, he anoints him with oil. Third, he puts him on his meal or animal that helps to move him. Four, he takes him to an inn. Five, he cares for him. And then, number six, he actually pays for his whole stay. Imagine if you picked up a person off the side of the road who had been in an accident, put him in your car, and took him to the hospital, and when you took him in, the man had no identification, but you said to the hospital, I will cover all his costs. And the hospital would say, well, we need some type of insurance. But you say, don't worry about it. Here's my credit card. Just put it on my account. That's what the Samaritan did for this man who had been beaten on the side of the road. He had gone the extra mile to take care of him. And Jesus was making a very strong point to his audience. So Jesus asked the man who had asked him the question about who is my neighbor this. Which of these three do you think was the neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the man who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Here Jesus was saying is your actions speak to your true values. In this case, the Samaritan showed the true values of compassion and love and was the true neighbor to the man who had been hurt. So what about your values? How do you determine what your values and how are you living those out at this time? Well, let's take a look at our checklist to get some ideas about how we might be able to figure this out. Well, first, do a mind map. Just try it out. You just put something in the middle of a piece of paper and you may write it down. Maybe it has to do with your uh, finances or a trip you're going to make or a decision you need to make. And then you just draw lines off that 
and write down, well, what is it that I need to do? What are the major topics? And then off those lines, you can actually write some smaller ones as well to see exactly what it will take to make that decision and the implications that is for what you are planning to do. Here's another one that can be quite revealing. Identify your family's unwritten rules. Now, I'm not talking just about your current family. I'm talking about when you were growing up. What were the unwritten rules that your parents had in regards to your upbringing? Were the things that you knew you were never supposed to do, even though no one told you not to do them, but you just instinctively knew that those were things that you were not supposed to do? What were the unwritten rules? I remember for my family, one of the unwritten rules was never be late to church. I remember one time we were late to church and my dad was quite upset because when we got to the church, we went to the front door and then we were let in and the worship service had already started and we had to wait until the first hymn was over and then the usher escorted us all the way down to the very front of the sanctuary and sat us down. And we all knew that that was something that my father would be quite upset about because he would have been very embarrassed because of that. That was an unwritten rule. So we all knew on Sunday morning, let's get out of here. We're not going to be late to church. But what are some of those unwritten rules that you grew up with. And what about today? What are the unwritten rules that you probably live out of but never have really thought about as to why you are doing them? This can be a quite a revealing exercise. And then for our purposes, how do your values reflect your faith. How does your faith in God and in Jesus Christ impact your values and in turn impact your actions, the way you are living your life? So I hope you have found this to be a helpful uh, talk as we think about this idea of values. The more we understand our own values and how they guide our decisions and how we make decisions becomes important to us. So I encourage you to try out this checklist and see what you discover. Let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In our benediction. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight in the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Amen. I invite you to enjoy our hymn today as sung by Angel and Michael.
together.